Now, as your uh, clients and collectors come into your gallery here, there are a number of things that they can see. This wonderful dimensional mosaic type puzzle like put together piece is fabulous, but there are home deck type things too. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, um, these are some of the sculptural murals that you see here, but I also have some lamps that I'm very proud of. Um, you can see the ag agave theme throughout most of my work. There's an agave lamp over here that I'm most proud of. Um, I also have some iron tables. Um, I have tiles, some welcome signs, a little of everything. Now, just as a chef has a signature dish, I understand you have a signature piece as well. My signature design is definitely the agave. You know, ever since I worked at the garden, I've been intrigued with the story, the life of the agave, how it uh, takes its whole life, maybe 100 years, maybe less, uh, to send up a bloom and stock and then the plant dies. And I've always been intrigued with that story. So you'll see it throughout my work. Um, you can see the seven foot agave that's on the wall here that I'm most known for. And what I did is back in the days when I was making bowls and plants and things, mm -hmm. that iconic agave design, I wanted it to take it to the next level. And that's what you see in the uh, seven foot agave Well, design. they're fabulous. Now let's take a closer look on how something like this is actually constructed. Yeah, come on back to the studio. Okay. This is a, a progression of my pieces. The first one is the saguaro here, and it's actually in the drying stage, so it's very fragile right now. But how this started out, this was a complete slab of wet clay, sort of like a clay canvas is what I had. Uh, what I did is I sketched the design, mm -hmm. cut it out, slowly formed the saguaro, and now it's slow drying. But the saguaro is all raised and ridged. It, so that was part of this whole flat piece and you just removed that? Actually it was. So the saguaro pieces were cut out uh -huh. and then they were each individually hand sculpted okay. and raised. Okay. So it's actually like a wall sculpture in essence. This has actually been drying about two to three weeks. What I do is I slow dry everything. All the moisture has to be out before it goes in the kiln, otherwise it'll explode. This has actually been fired once. What we call this in ceramics is bisque. So we can actually touch it now. Uh, but see how it feels very porous? Yes. So at that point, it will accept the glaze. Okay. So I can actually brush on or dip or add the glazes in various stages. Now, there's some little pieces over there, too. What are those for? Every piece that I make comes framed, in essence. And it's a ceramic frame. So let me show you. These pieces, when it's done and they're glazed, will actually encircle the piece. This is what I call a test tile. Okay. And uh, what I will do is sit down with the client and we'll come up with a design and a sketch. Mm -hmm. And then we will talk about colors. Mm -hmm. And then I have the sample and I can sort of show them how it will be. And you can see the gradation in here from dark, from the to, dark light. to the light. Now, once this is all glazed, what's next? Then it goes in the kiln, which is behind me here. Okay. And then it's fired. And depending on the look that I want and mm -hmm. the glazes, and I'll show you in this uh, finished piece, um, it can be fired several times to get different effects. Glazes are layered, um, different temperatures, different effects to get the look. So it's through your experience over all these years that you have come up with your own unique color combination Absolutely. and designs. So then what I'll do is um, take all the pieces, kind of like a puzzle, mm -hmm. and then we'll move to this stage here. And what you're seeing, this is obviously uh, an, an aloe bed, and all these individual pieces are put back together on a substrate. Can you kind of see the board underneath yes. there? Yes. Now, what is that substrate, or is that a secret? Um, it's a secret. And that's another thing. It's um, years of trial and error, and I think I finally got the combination down where it can survive for many, many years indoors and out in Arizona. Even in a wet climate? Yes. But you can see that when I'm adhering these tiles, you can see in the leaves here, yes. how I adhere them in a way that they're very three-dimensional. So there's a lot of spaces left there. Uh, at that stage, it needs to dry, the adhesive dries, probably a good week or two. You can tell these pieces take a long time. That's do we have anything in the kiln right now? We do. Can we take a look? Yes. Okay. This now, is always the most exciting time, Diane. And this has been in here how long? Uh, it's been cooling about two days. Can you still feel the heat? I in can. It? It's still warm. Yeah. There's some war warmth from the kiln as well. This is beautiful. Yeah, that came out real nice. Now, um, I'm assuming this is probably one of your more popular pieces here. This is actually my most popular tile. And could I ask how much this would run for in your gallery? This sells for two forty nine. dollars You know, and I'm picking this up right now. It's about five pounds or so, five or six pounds. How, about, how does that weigh in compared to something like this? 
This piece here is actually about 100 pounds, so this is much lighter. And this is a different technique. This is actually terracotta clay. So the clay is different. It's a different clay, different technique, even different firing temperatures. Everything's different. This is actually a, uh, a mold. And what I do is I sculpt the original. So what you're looking at is mm -hmm. uh, sort of an impression of the original piece, and I make a cast of it, mm -hmm. and then I pour what we call slip, which is a liquid clay, into it. What I did here is I actually sculpted an original piece, and then I made a plaster mold from it. This way I'm able to reproduce it a few times. Well, like everything else with ceramics, it has to slow and dry, so you really need to control it. So it probably will um, rest for about a full day before I'll pop it out. And then once it's out, it'll slow dry for at least a week. And then it goes in the kiln for its first firing. That's right. And then we end up with a piece like this after the first firing. That's right. Now this is ready to be glazed. Yes, this is bisque. Once again, it's still very porous, as you can feel, and it will accept the glaze. So what I have now here is, once again, like a blank canvas that needs to be painted or glazed. But now when you paint this, it's not like painting a painting one time through and you're done. It has to be layers, right? That's right. So what does that look like when we're going to be starting to do that? Can we see that a little bit? Yeah, let me brush a little on for you. Um, with ceramic you glazes, like that? yeah, that'd be great. With ceramic glazes, you really have to have some faith in what you're doing because the glaze never looks like it is when it's fired. Okay. For example, the beautiful green that you saw in the leaves. Yes. Look how it looks when it's going on. So that green is actually a terracotta color right now. Right now it is. And when it's fired, it will be green. That's right. And the thing about this is that it has to be layered several times. So once this is completely done, I have to go back and do it two more times. Now this tile is what, 12 by 12? This is okay. actually 14 by 14. Um, and, and you have some smaller ones in the gallery as well. I do. I have some very popular ones that are 7.5 by 7.5. And, and those smaller ones, what's the most popular use for those? A lot of people like to put them in their kitchen, backsplashes, patio walls. It's, it's um, up to your imagination what you can do with them. Now these would be fairly easy to hang, but when you get a large piece that's 100 pounds or so or more, um, I might be kind of frightened putting that up in my home. Do you supply installation as well? Absolutely. I always offer an installation service. The pieces are built with a cleat actually in the back to make installation easy. So if people do want to do it on their own, they can, but I'm always there for them. Or if they have to be shipped somewhere. So it's ready to be put on the wall. That's right. Well, great. Now we have one more thing to look at in your working studio here, and that's how you start with your clay. So could we take a look at that? This is a slab roller. We take a slab of clay like that, nice and easy. Squeeze it down. Is that all under pressure? It is. And we do this various stages, and it becomes flatter and flatter. And what I get is a piece like this. You can see how it's symmetrical, very nice. OK, and then you carve it out in the actually, shapes that you want. That's right. And it gets to a point where it's very pliable, and then I can actually start to form it and make it like a leaf, which this is what it would look like when it's done. Now, this has been fired once, and then when it goes in the last firing, it's glazed and looks like that. So, so now we have an agave leaf that is now a bowl of some, or a platter of some sort. That's right, or it will become part of one of the seven foot agaves that you see. On Which it. is your signature piece. That's right. Very nice. Jim, this has to be my favorite piece in the entire gallery, but it's so different as far as being tropical in comparison to the desert botanicals. How did this come about? Interesting story about this. A collector in South Florida mm -hmm. loved my work and the forms that I did, but they wanted something that represented the area that they lived in. So... This is one of the results. Yeah. So if a client would like any type of plant, can they come and see you? I absolutely love when they do that. And where would they come to see your work and chat with you? Everybody's invited down to my gallery. Here Which is? 7037 East 1st Avenue in downtown Scottsdale. And a website? JimSudalPottery.com.